Hey y'all, welcome back to Best Living. I'm Joe, and I create faith-based lifestyle content. So today we're talking about disappointment and how to manage it. I know that we're in the love month of February, which is great. However, during seasons of heightened celebration, oftentimes people can feel disappointment or sadness the most because there's a void of what they thought they would have. So today we're going to lean, literally lean into those feelings during our time together. Because what we don't address, we can't heal. And what we can't heal, we surely can't overcome. So remember to like, share, and subscribe. And let's get right into it. In life, we will all experience some level of disappointment. Disappointment is hard. It doesn't feel good. And I feel that it can cause us to doubt ourselves and even God if we're honest. I have a question. Did you ever scrape or cut yourself as a child? I feel like most 80s and 90s babies will have like the quintessential cut or scrape on the knee from playing outside all day. Well, I vividly remember my first little kind of incident where I had a really significant kind of you know, accident or, or scab on my leg. I was learning how to ride a bike with my father and I ended up going into the bushes. Needless to say, I got all scratched up and needed a band-aid or two. Well, my mom dressed my wound and then a few days later she said, you need to take the band-aid off and let it get some air. And I said, get some air? What does that mean? And she says it has to heal from the inside out but the way we do that is giving the wound a little bit of air to circulate around the issue that's going on so you can feel better. Isn't that just like disappointment? It's an internal wound that we often conceal with our words like, I didn't want it anyway. It ain't that important to me. I'll pass. I'll pass. It ain't all that. But on the inside, we're grieving, we're sad about things. And we often try to deflect from our pain with our expectations not being met by what we say. But if we don't deal with the pain from our failed expectations not being met, then we can't overcome. And being a Christian, being someone of faith, we are entitled to overcome. That is what Jesus came to do when he went to Calvary was he overcame every situation that we would ever encounter as believers. So it is due to us. It is our right through the blood that he shed to be overcomers. So why not take ownership of that? Because it's hard. I know it. I know it's hard. You know, it's it's hard for me to at times remember that I am more than a conqueror. When life kind of knocks me down and things I thought that would have happened by now haven't. And I see everyone else's highlight reels on Insta or TikTok or Facebook. And everyone else seems to be getting what they want, but I'm not, right? In those moments of our humanity, Christ is right there with us. He is not absent because we're hurting. If anything, He's closer to us if we allow him to be. But that's the trick. It's if we allow him to enter into those more secret places of our disappointment, of our frustration, of our hurt, for him to come in and to be a bomb. There was a song growing up called, He's the Bomb of Gilead. And I thought it was B-O-M-B. Like, he's the bomb because back in the day, being the bomb was that thing. And God is the bomb. But the song actually said he is a bomb, which means a thick covering. Think about Vaseline. It's a thick substance covering that once you put it on, it takes some work to work it in or to take it off, right? So that's what Christ has come to do for us, is to be a bomb over those areas of disappointment, frustration and sad. Now, if not properly managed, disappointment can really lead to resentment if not healed from the inside out. If we look through an alternate lens, if we change to shift our perspective, we can at times see disappointment as a bomb, a covering, or protection from our father. Now, I know that doesn't sound warm and fuzzy because in the moment it's not. 
I personally suffered some disappointments this week alone. Did I, you know, experience sadness? The answer is yes. <laughs> uh, was I confused about why it, it, it didn't happen? Yes. <laughs> but that doesn't negate God's goodness, right? If he did do what I thought he was going to do, he's still good, right? And if he doesn't do what I thought he was going to do, he's still good, right? So either way, the yes or the no, the fulfillment or the waiting and expectation doesn't negate God's goodness toward us, his children. And that is something we have to call true remembrance when we are feeling these moments of disappointment and sadness is that he's still a good, good father, that he still wants the best for us, his children. But the issue is that we have to take hold of those things of his through our disappointment. And oftentimes the enemy or even ourselves will keep us from accessing what is rightfully ours. When we don't express our hurt and disappointment first to ourselves, that we are disappointed, that we are grieving, that something didn't happen the way we wanted, or to God and expressing to him, like, I really thought you had me in this situation. Like, I thought we was tracking. I thought we were really on one accord that I was hearing correctly. When we don't have those kind of heart-to-heart, -heart, kind of clear the air moment, when we do not express our hurt and our disappointment to ourselves and to God, we hold captive our healing for a ransom that's already been paid through God's grace. There's two scriptures I want to highlight. First is Ephesians 2, 8 and 9. For by this grace have you been saved through faith. And this is not from yourselves, but is a gift from God, not by works so that no man can boast. So in short, what this means is that God has already given a gift that he gave that nobody else can lay claim to and it's ours for the taking. But the thing about a gift is that you have to choose to receive it. The second scripture I want to bring our attention to is 2 Corinthians 12 and 9. And this reads, My grace is all you need. My power works best in weakness. And this is the New Living Translation. I really like this translation because it's straight to the point. I got what you need and it's all you got. <laughs> That's pretty much what that scripture says to me. Work. His power is at the greatest degree when we have come to the end of ourselves. And often disappointment is a tool to get us to realize we don't have the power. Uh, one pastor I've heard say this, Darius Daniels, is that control is an illusion. We think we have the power and we can make our plans. But if we're honest, we often will have or experience an altered view of God when things don't go our way. Or maybe I'm the only one. Am I the only one? When things don't go my way or the way I thought they should according to plan, I'm like, again, I thought we were in this together. I thought, I thought we knew that we were doing this, God. I thought we knew that I wanted this to happen. And then the Holy Spirit prompted me one day and he said, but whose plan are you following? Did I say that? And I'm like, wow, I don't know, did you? I got so busy moving, putting into motion, into place a plan I wanted for myself that I forgot to consult and remember that God establishes the plans for his children, right? If he's already established a plan, then I should go to him and say, okay, God, what's on your docket? Here's what's on my docket. Is there any overlap? And is there something I should be subtracting because that's not what you find best for me? In the long run, when we have those type of conversations with God about the plans he has for us, those who have prospered not to have harmed us, when we have those out the gate, we can have clear expectations or manage our own expectations of what God will and won't do. 
because he's already spoken and said a thing. But the reverse can be true too. That if we just make a plan and be like, God, here's what we're doing, and he don't have no buy-in, and they were disappointed because he didn't do something that he said, that he didn't say he would do anyway, then we're left holding the bag being like, I thought you had me. So the Bible says the Lord directs the steps of the godly. He delights in every detail of their lives. That's Psalms 37, 23. That's the New Living Translation. That the Amplified says this way. The steps of a good and righteous man or woman are directed and established by the Lord. And he delights in his way and blesses his path. So when we think about the plans that we make for ourselves, we should really consult and match it up to the Psalms 37, 23. Are these established by the Lord? Is he directing me to do this? And will he delight in what I am doing? Right? Keep that scripture top of mind because that will be a guiding light. His word will be a lamp upon our feet. But if we are not in the word to know where our feet should go, then there too will lead to disappointment because we've not consulted with yet the father concerning us, his children. So you may be asking, well, girl, okay, you done told me I'm disappointed. I know I'm disappointed. I don't feel good about it. What do I do about it? I'm so glad you asked. My first recommendation is feeling what you feel. It's very important that anytime we have something that disrupts our emotional health, disappointment, sadness, anger, you name it, we need to process and walk through that. There are clear examples in the Bible where prophets, kings, and Jesus himself had to walk through the various human emotions that we are going to encounter in the land of the living. So because we know we have to handle these things, it's best that we utilize the grace God has given us to do just that. Number two is to get up. Girl, get up. <laughs> So a lot of times, at least for me, when I feel disappointed, your countenance may be down. But David said, I will bless the Lord at all times. <laughs> and all things, in all times, full of praise be in my mouth. So even in the moments when we are saddened and maybe sunken back and experiencing things that are contrary to what we thought we would be, we still have to choose to get up. We still have to choose to, in essence, fight another day. You have to tell yourself, I ain't the one. I am not the one to quit. I am not the one to wallow. I am not the one to pitch a tent and to have a pity party. If anything, we're going to send invitations to I am the overcomer party, right? If we're going to turn up, it's going to be turning up because God has turned something over in our lives, amen, to where we can truly celebrate the goodness of what he's done through us and for us. So getting up is not just physical, but it's mental. It's emotional as well. It's setting the tone of how we're going to live our lives despite what we're feeling. Lastly, we're going to regroup. We're going to go back to the Father's feet and ask him, Lord, did I hear you clearly? <laughs> are we on the same page? So God is the master strategist. His ways are not our ways. His thoughts are not our thoughts. Clearly, because had he and I been thinking the same, I wouldn't be experiencing disappointment, right? So when we regroup, we are leveraging the disappointment to get in realignment with God. And when I say realignment, it doesn't mean that you're out of alignment or out of will. It just means that we're doing a listening check to making sure that if God said where and when, that I am doing the where and the when, and if God said the who and the what, then I'm doing the who and the what. And that I'm not confusing or overemphasizing what I want over his will, right? Functioning in accordance to what God will have me to do. That because his plan is already established, that I'm consulting him on what his plan is and be my role and participation in it. So those are the tips that I have today. However, I do want to offer a prayer because 
at least I know for me, it's a challenge depending upon how great the disappointment is. Because let's be honest, certain things we may have been holding out for a long time, waiting for deliverance for, or waiting for God to answer something. And maybe he hasn't done it yet, or he did differently than what you thought he was going to. And you're still grappling with that. And again, during this month of love, which it is, it's a beautiful month. Every month is a month of love. But because February is so heavy on, look at my life, it's so perfect, it's this or that. It can really leave people, and at times myself, feeling isolated for the moments that I'm still asking God to fulfill. And it's in those moments of my humanity where I'm saying, God, you haven't yet, but I know you can. And I'm asking, will you, that I want to bring us together. We are a community. We are meant to do this together. So we're going to pray. And we're going to pray that God will give us strength <laughs> to endure. And that if we cannot have understanding, that he help our unbelief. So let's pray together. Dear Lord. We come as your children, disappointed, confused, and some angry that things in our life have not met our expectation. We know that you are a good, good father and that you withhold no good thing from your children. We clear the air. We surrender those secret, secret and private places in our hearts that only you know. The disappointments and the unspoken, Father God, that only you can see. Father God, we thank you that your ways are not our ways and your thoughts are not our thoughts because, Father God, if they were, we would have no need for you. But, Father God, because we need you every day, every hour, we lift our hands and we pray that you will help our unbelief. That, Father God, although we may not always be able to see or sense your hand, we know your heart and your posture is good and of love and of grace toward us. So, Father God, grant us, your children, the strength to continue, the strength to endure, and the strength to access the power to overcome through your grace. We thank you, Father God, that through this, your name will be elevated and glorified, and that you too will get the praise so that we can declare, look what the Lord has done yet again. We thank you, Father God, for these, your children. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So I thank y'all for hanging out with me today. I do pray that you remember that you were seen, that you are so incredibly loved, and that you are chosen of the Most High. And although sometimes it feels like we're not being picked, we can never be plucked from his hand. So until next time, I pray that you were blessed, and I will see you back here in a few days with a brand new video. Bye.